But now, thus says the Lord, he who created me, O Jacob, he who formed me, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom. Touch and see that in exchange for you. Thank you, Alex. Well, good morning, everyone. See if I can not destroy this microphone while I'm up here. All right. Turn on my clicker to get myself set up here. All right. I don't know how many of you feel the same way that I do. I don't know if you feel like 2020 is some episode of the Twilight Zone or not, but I know there's a lot of people who feel that way. And that may be a reference that not everybody gets. I may be dating myself a little bit there. But it's like a disaster movie. Anything that could go wrong goes wrong. It seems like anything that starts out small becomes large and far more dramatic than we ever expected that it could be. Over the last six months, we've had a pandemic with COVID-19. We've had schools shut down or simply switched to online. We have a few that are back in person part-time. We've also experienced businesses being forced to close down, businesses permanently closing, people's livelihood going through traumatic times. We're in a time of political and civil unrest. There's been rioting. There's been protesting. There have been hurricanes, like there always is. There have been fires, like there always are. There have been statewide power outages in different places. There's even been something that I heard in the news called murder hornets. And then on top of all that, it's an election year, which brings out the very worst in our ability to communicate with one another. And you may be saying to yourself, 2020 is a terrible year. And in some ways it is. A couple of weeks ago, Brandon Clark led our thoughts in communion, and he really put into words something that I have been thinking and that I have been feeling this entire time, and he said it so well. And I want to just expand on what he spoke about in those communion thoughts, because it's a message that I think we all need to hear. I don't know if you turn on the news or if you look at your emails, but there's a word that's been thrown around a lot, and it's on the screen behind me. It's this word, unprecedented. We hear it on the news, we hear it in commercials, we see it in emails, we use it when we talk to one another about life right now. Unprecedented circumstances, unprecedented times. And I agree with Brandon, I don't really like the word. Because it implies that we've never been here before and that we don't know where we're going. It breeds uncertainty and it stirs up anxiety within us when we hear that word and think that we don't know what's going on. But guess what? God's people have been through pandemics before. We've lived as a church through civil unrest, riot, uh, rioting, and protesting. This isn't the first time that the church has faced racial inequality or economic inequality. This isn't the first time that God's people have lived through economic disasters. I'm not saying this to make light of what's happened in 2020. I'm saying it to try and gain some perspective. And that's why I want to expand a little bit on what Brandon said. When we read scripture, we can know that God's people have been through truly unprecedented circumstances and unprecedented times. But we can know today that the gospel is still exactly the same. We can know that the gospel is still true, and we can know that God's promises 
to his people have not changed, and they will not change. They will be there tomorrow as they were yesterday and as they are today. Scripture is rich with reassurance of God's faithfulness. There are messages throughout the Bible that tell us that God is willing not only to see us go through difficult times, but to walk with us in those difficult circumstances. And that's why our scripture reading today and the passage that I want to spend a little bit of time looking at is Isaiah 43. I think that there is a promise in there that speaks to what we're feeling and what we're seeing in 2020. And I know it's been of comfort to me, and I hope that we can look at it today together, and you can find some comfort as well. I'm going to reread that again. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. This passage speaks directly to what I've been feeling over the last six months. It speaks to the anxiety that I feel with the things that are happening in our world. It speaks to the fear that tries to creep in and take over. It speaks to that emotional overload that I think we've all experienced where we say, enough is enough, I just have to unplug, I have to wrap away because there's just so much happening. And God speaks into that emotion and he tells us that we don't have to be afraid. He tells us that we've been redeemed. He says that he specifically called me, that he has specifically called you by your very name. Personally, God is speaking to you in this time the words of Isaiah 43. I love visual things. I'm a visual person, especially when it comes to abstract or the unseen or spiritual concepts. And guess what? This passage is rich with object lessons that we can look at. The two elements that it talks about in this passage to try and help us understand this are the objects of water and fire. Elements that represent washing, cleaning, cleansing. But also fire that can represent trials. They can represent hardship. But it also brings purification. When I read the words here of passing through waters, there's a few things that immediately pop into my mind, and we're going to look at those first. The first thing that I thought of when I read these words, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, was Noah and the flood. Talk about living in a truly unprecedented time. Noah lived through things that no one had seen before, ever, and haven't since. And it's a story not only of God cleansing the world of evil and sin through flooding, it's also a story of God's faithfulness to Noah and how he walked with Noah through difficult times. I also thought of Israel when they crossed the Red Sea. Israel had come to a beachhead. They were standing before the Red Sea. There was an army descending on them. And they didn't have any hope. They hadn't lived through anything like that, the people that were standing on that beach. And they never would have expected for the seas to be parted for them to cross on dry ground. But once again, we have a story of God's faithfulness to his people in difficult circumstances. It also is echoed in the crossing of the Jordan River. 
as Israel finally moves in to fulfill a promise that God had made hundreds of years earlier, they're reminded of what happened at the Red Sea. They're reminded of all of the stories of God's faithfulness when it comes to passing through difficult circumstances. You can't help but also think of baptism. Baptism is a personal story to a lot of us. It's a story of when we enter water and come out the other side different. We come out washed, sanctified, justified, white as snow, a new creation filled with the very Spirit of God. And guess what? God was with us, with us through that experience. The promise of Isaiah 43 is the promise that when you pass through water, when you pass through difficult circumstances, when you face what could be unprecedented times or at least times that you have never experienced, that God will be with you in those circumstances. I want to tell you a story of Joshua to try and wrap our heads a little bit more around this image of facing and crossing through water. Now, I'm going to warn you, it's not the Joshua you were thinking of. It's actually a story about Joshua Dubois, believe it or not. And there's another Joshua in the story, Joshua Warren, actually. Um, back in November, I was invited to go on a hike with a few gentlemen. And on that hike, we all pile out of our vans. It's over in Sherlow. It's beautiful. And we look to see where the trail is. And guess what's in between us and where the trail is supposed to go? A river. But there's a log that's fallen across this river. None of us know what to expect of this log. None of us know what this log's intentions are for us. If they're benign or if that log is looking for an excuse to simply deposit us in something wet and cold. I'm going to play a video for you showing what happened. It's a short video. You can see Josh Warren here crossing the log. My confidence has increased greatly because I know if Josh is going across, then it's probably safe for me too. Not to say that Josh is flat. I'm saying he's a solidly built man. You can see the rocks of encouragement that were thrown. You can see a few people that approached the log and said, I'm not being two or three across this thing. I'm going to let somebody else experience. And then it's Josh's turn. You can see the trepidation in his movements. You can see that he is questioning the motives of this lab. But he steps out. He starts across. And the further he makes it, the greater you see his confidence. <laughs> there may have been some sprinting at the end. But the point is, we can look at someone else experiencing a difficult time and see God's faithfulness in it, but it doesn't always translate into our own confidence. Just like Josh saw Josh cross that log, but it didn't necessarily give him all of the confidence to set out boldly across that log. But as he experienced it, it changed. Now, there was one other gentleman who was there who looked at this log and said, I have no doubt that this log does not have my best interest at heart, and through years of wisdom, found another way. He looked for a shallow spot in the stream, and Kevin just got his feet a little bit wet and said, See you, log. I'm not doing that. I'm finding another way. I think there's some wisdom in that. So I think it's human nature and it's normal for us when we approach an unknown circumstance to be cautious. When we don't know what's going to happen, we tend to be a little more timid than if we know what's going to happen. And that's exactly what happened to Josh. That's exactly what happened to some of the other gentlemen as they tried to make their way across that river. Now what happens when we encounter something that we have seen before and experienced before? Well, it looks something like this. Every single person who was timid, every single person who found another route, was able to cross back over that log with 100% confidence, skipping 
in some cases, and just absolute confidence as to what the outcome was going to be. Why? Because they had experienced it before. Because they knew what they were in for. They didn't just have an example that someone else could do it. They had an example that I can do it. I can achieve this. And this is what Isaiah 43 is talking about. Not a small river like this. Not something that you risk a little inconvenience and a little water. It's talking about a raging river. It's talking about trying to pass through a forest that is on fire. It's talking about a circumstance that we encounter in life that is so overwhelming and we are so underprepared for that there is no way that this is going to end well. That is the circumstance of Isaiah 43 that God is talking about. That is the circumstance that God says that he will be with you. Isaiah is telling us that when we face unprecedented situations, unfamiliar situations, new-to-us situations, that God will see us to the other side. That when the river is raging in our lives, when our lives are burning down around us, when we're surrounded with temptation and adversity, that He will provide. God will provide. When we look through Scripture, we can see God's faithfulness to His people everywhere. When we look at the lives of our brothers and sisters, we can be encouraged to see the rivers that they have forded and how God has been with them through difficult circumstances. We can look at our own past experiences where life got hard, and we can see that God was there with us and that he was faithful. A lot of times we want a passage that's spelled out very clearly, though. We want our name in there. We want to know exactly what the outcome is going to be when it's something that we haven't experienced before. And this is what we think a lot of times when we encounter those situations. Me plus unprecedented or something that I've never experienced before is unknown. But this isn't the equation that we have to face life with, is it? Because the promise of Isaiah 43 says that there's a little bracket that goes around me and God. And what do we do when we encounter that in math? We solve that part of it first. But we also have to promise throughout Scripture that no matter what we face in life as His children, nothing can keep us from heaven when God is on our side. We don't know any uncircum we don't know any circumstance that doesn't end with God being victorious. So it changes the equation. There may be something in that unprecedented or unknown area, but we know that it's solved by God as He travels with us through those circumstances. So when we take the words of Isaiah forty three and we apply them to our lives during times of anxiety during times of depression, during times of fear or isolation, or fill in whatever emotion you have felt in the last six months that has been trying to take over your life and take over your relationship with God, you can know that that emotion will be passed through. That circumstance will be passed through. The words of Isaiah 43 might be words that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew. And it very much echoes what we see their statement of faith being when they encountered a circumstance that they had never experienced before. When they were told, bow down and worship something other than God, or be thrown into a fire and be burned to death, they said these words. We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace... The God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But, there's a juicy word. Whenever you see that, you know that what was before and what was after is going to mean far more than they did on their own. And it doesn't disappoint you either. 
But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will serve, we will not serve your gods or worship the image you have set up. And you know what happened with Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego? God was faithful. They said, whatever happens in life, whether it's the worst or the best, it doesn't matter. Because God's going to rock with us. And they stepped out in faith, and you know what happened? Not only was their faith rewarded, but the people watching their faith encounter difficult circumstances revealed God's presence. Those watching what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the outside saw someone who looked like the very Son of God standing with them in the flames, and none of them were consumed. And it goes on, and God is proclaimed through people facing uncertain circumstances with the promise of Isaiah 43. There's one last part of Isaiah 43 I want to look at before we hop on to a second verse. I have two that I want to share with you today. The last part of it is the fire imagery that we see here. A lot of times, fire is talking about purification. Specifically, there's a lot of analogies when it comes to purifying gold and silver. In order for that gold or silver to be purified, it passes through fire and it is broken down so that the impurities can be burned away or they can be removed. Then that object is fit to craft to its intended purpose without the weakness and the impurity so that it can truly be what it was meant to be. But we don't like that idea when it comes to difficult circumstances breaking us down, do we? And that's why I think we have to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I feel like Isaiah 43 and this passage go hand in hand because Isaiah talks about God's promise, but then 2 Corinthians talks about the process what is really happening when we face adversity? And the two go together very well. This passage starts out in verse 16, and it gives us a different perspective when it comes to difficult times. And it says this, Therefore, do not lose heart. Sounds familiar. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our right and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So if we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This passage tells us that we don't have to lose our hope. We don't have to lose our heart. Because guess what? God is working in us daily. Even when it looks like our life is falling apart, even when the troubles and pressures that we find ourselves experiencing in life seem unprecedented or new to us, we can know that they're temporary. And the promise is when we experience these temporary difficulties, that God is building something in us that is eternal. Something that requires adversity or conflict in order for him to build it. God is saying that if you do not pass through these light and momentary troubles, this construction project isn't going to be achieved. And it tells us that what we receive in exchange for our troubles far outweighs any trouble that we can experience in this world. That the eternal things of God are greater than any tribulation we can experience in this life. I hope these words are encouraging to you. But I want to leave you with four things to think about over the next week. If you've got a pen, grab it. You can write it in your bulletin. Watch it online at home. You can screenshot it, write it down on your hand, whatever you got to do. These are some things for you to reflect on. Think about Isaiah 43. 
Think of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and now I want you to fix in your mind a difficult situation that you've faced in your life in the past. Be specific right now. Think of one, write it down, whatever you have to do. Think of a difficult time in your life, and I want you to ask yourself this first. When you were in that moment, did you feel God's presence? I'm going to be honest and answer it for you. Sometimes, yes, absolutely. I have been in very difficult moments, and I have absolutely felt the presence of God. But I have also been in dire circumstances and felt absolutely alone. The second question that I want you to ask yourself is this. Looking back, do you see him there now? 100% unequivocally, every single moment where I did not think he was there, looking back, I can see him. Thirdly, I want you to ask yourself, what comfort can you draw from this knowledge now? What you're feeling today, what you felt over the last six months, with those previous two questions answered, how does that affect what you're experiencing today? And lastly, how can this knowledge sustain you as you encounter challenges in the future? With this idea of God's faithfulness, with a clear view of Isaiah 43 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4, how does that prepare you for what you're facing in the future? I don't know what you've been feeling in the last six months. I don't know what barriers your faith has encountered. But in a minute, we're going to sing a song. And God didn't just promise to walk with us. God promised us that others would walk with us as well. To be his hands and his feet. To be his loving arms. To be those words of encouragement and perspective when we need it. In a minute when we sing a song, there are elders that if you need something, they want to sit down and they want to talk with you. They want to pray with you. So whatever your need is, I invite you to come and have a conversation and have a prayer with people that want to walk with you through difficult times. This concludes our lesson. We want to thank you for taking time out to watch this presentation. If you want any additional content, please feel free to visit our YouTube channel or our church website. Just a reminder, our Sunday morning Bible class begins at 9.30 a.m., followed by our morning worship at 10.30 a.m. We want to encourage you to continue to be a part of our fellowship, whether that be online or in person. And as always, thank you for watching and have a blessed day.